My name is Matthew Holowinski. I'm a technical consultant here at Autodesk. And in this webinar, I'll take you through a design exploration of a stylish high-speed land sailor. The type of land sailor we're talking about here is one that's capable of going well over 100 miles per hour using only the wind. As a side note, the current land sailor speed record is held by Richard M. Jenkins. He broke the record with a speed of 126.1 miles per hour in March of 2009 on a dry lake bed in California. Now, the winds were gusting about 40 miles per hour that day, and I just find it fascinating to think that a vehicle can be propelled over three times the wind speed by harnessing just the wind. Now, our land sailor is still in the conceptual design stage, uh, which gives us a great opportunity to highlight how Bonsai 3D can be used as a conceptual design tool. In this webinar, we'll cover sketching. Uh, we'll see how Bonsai 3D lets you quickly lay out your thoughts and ideas with 2D and 3D sketching. We'll also see how easy it is to transform your sketches into a, a true 3D model using solid or surface modeling. Now, you don't have to start with a 2D sketch in Bonsai 3D. That's just the way I did it with this project. Uh, you can just as easily start your design with a 3D model if you want also. We'll also look at the ease of sculpting objects. I'll start with a solid box and reshape it into a detailed object using only a few tools. Now, we'll spend the majority of our time uh, looking at stylish surfaces. Uh, you'll see the ease of creating, editing, and manipulating sleek 3D forms, which are commonly used in any type of industrial or product design project. There's a variety of features in Bonsai 3D that can be used to illustrate your design intent, uh, such as textures and dimensions and section views. You can use transparent materials to visualize your design in a more abstract way, sort of like an x-ray image. Uh, here we have a render zone rendering as if you're actually sitting inside the land sailor and you can add some special effects such as lens flares. So with that, let's get started. I'll show you step by step how to build your own stylish high speed land sailor. And I would like to mention that all the conceptual sketching, 3D modeling, rendering and visualization that you see here was all created solely in Bonsai 3D. So with that, let's launch Bonsai. Here we go. Uh, what we're going to do is start by looking at how we can sort of quickly lay out our thoughts and ideas in sort of a two and a half D sketch. Uh, what I do is I just sort of lay out some shapes to sort of lay things out. Uh, and I'll just, this will be a good introduction to how the interface of Bonsai 3D works. So maybe we'll do, maybe resketch the side wheel assembly over here. And we can see that uh, how Bonsai 3D works is uh, you just pick any of the drawing tools. So maybe a spline drawing tool. And notice that as you move it, across your scene, uh, it'll highlight the drawing plane on any existing surface that is there. So I can draw anywhere on any of these existing surfaces. Now, if I move my cursor over here, you can press and release the F5 key. And what that does, it actually locks it at the current position of where it's at. So if I were to start sketching, of course, you can see now uh, that plane extends infinitely in your scene, and I can just sort of draw right on that plane. Now, you can also switch to any other drawing tool as you're sketching. So maybe we'll switch to the vector line tool. And notice that we do get these guides. These guides automatically pop up, so I can always make sure things are lined up X, Y, Z, or perpendicular or tangent to the previous line that I have drawn. So let's switch back to maybe the spline drawing tool. And try and finish up our spline over here. And you see it'll automatically close that shape for me if I get that close enough to the very end. All right, now it's gonna try to make it a 3D object. That's just, that's just the default setting. So if I escape out of that, it'll just make it a normal 2D shape. And of course, uh, we can set that here to be either 2D or 3D shapes in the tool options in that area. All right, uh, now one thing you'll notice in Bonsai 3D is that as soon as you create something, it automatically gives you the controls of that object. And we'll see that uh, often with any object that we create. So it's very easy to go back and modify uh, that shape after it's created. So I can sort of move these around and reshape that object. All right, so maybe push that up a little bit like that. All right, now uh, let's say we want to add some color to that. Uh, here's the materials palette up here. All you have to do is double click any of those. And you can see that Bonsai 3D comes with hundreds of materials that come with the program. They're organized in different categories here. Or you can create your own to set your color, reflection, and transparency and all that stuff here. So here I created one that's sort of a red and yellow type of a transparent gradient. All you do is drag and drop it right on the object. 
Now, when you create objects, Bonsai 3D automatically texture maps them for you. It'll use cubic, cylinder, spherical, parametric mapping. It just looks at the object and it knows what type of mapping to put on which part of that object. Now, if you do want to change it, there is a edit texture tool, which is right here. And you can see if I were to click on that object, uh, you can see that it gives you these controls that I can modify. So maybe I'll rotate it, rotate that texture this way, or maybe that way, and just sort of move that texture on the surface. Uh, rescale the horizontal or vertical size of it, and that's how easy it is to apply colors to those objects. All right, so now if we want to draw some other shapes, uh, notice that we're still locked on that plane, so we F5 key again to release that lock plane. Now, of course, it's going to draw on any plane that is there. Now, a second way of drawing in 3D space is we can use the Create Custom Plane tool, which is right down here. And if you were to click on that, and then just go ahead and click on any surface or any object, and it creates a custom plane now that is now your default plane now and there's this other tool right next to that one which lets us move that plane anywhere that we want so we can move it uh, we can click on these rings in order to rotate it in any orientation we need uh, we can change by clicking this yellow arrow we can change the size of the visible grid now this drawing grid really extends forever uh, but just the visible portion of that grid we can move those arrows and make it any shape any size and so there you can see how easy it is to be able to draw anywhere in 3d space so uh, since we have that plane there uh, let's maybe create sort of a um, sketch of how the body is going to transition into the side wheel assembly over here so what i'll do is uh, start off with something a very simple shape maybe a 2d rectangle so i'll draw that and you see the only controls i have now is the length and width of that thing and that's it if i want if I want to make it a curved shape, now there's many ways of making curved shapes. This is just one of them anyways. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to our NURBS tool. We'll be using NURBS a lot today. Uh, we can even use them on simple 2D shapes. For example, if I go to the NURBS convert, I'll be using that often. What I can do is click on the object and that converts it into a what's called a NURBS object. Uh, think of that as just a smooth organic shape with a set of controls that we can use to further edit that. So if we use the reconstruct tool, I click on the object we can increase or decrease the number of controls on that object. Just type in the number that you want. Now, once we have that set there, you can see that uh, since we have more controls on there, we can take these controls and move them uh, and create a, or sort of sculpt a more organic looking shape here. So what we'll do is just sort of move these controls and play with that and, you know, really uh, use Bonsai 3D as a design tool. So, you know, sometimes we're not sure exactly what we want yet, so we can just sort of, you know, create some basic shapes and just sort of um, sculpt them into, you know, more complex forms. And, and the other power is being able to go back and we can turn those controls on whenever we want, so we can always go back and make changes to that. Okay, so that's a good introduction to how the interface works. And of course, you can see probably how we can sort of easily sketch out our ideas in sort of a 2.5D world here. But now, uh, let's get into some of the 3D modeling tools. So maybe what we'll do is I'll go towards the front here. And we have the wheel assembly. And maybe we'll recreate a couple of these items to highlight some of the other modeling tools in Bonsai 3D. Now, of course, we're not going to model all the stuff here. We're just going to pick out a couple items uh, to highlight a couple of these other features. All right, maybe what we'll do is recreate this bracket. Now, the bracket's not too exciting, but I'm going to show you some tools that are. Uh, and these are the bread and butter uh, of Bonsai 3D of being able to sort of reshape objects and sculpt objects. So what we'll do is start off with just a simple box. To create that bracket all right and with this box here what we'll do is go to the reshape suite of icons now i use these constantly i love these tools um what we can do is use the offset segment uh, i can offset a single segment or i can hold down the shift key and i can select multiple segments and offset those segments any distance that i want now notice that i do have my grid snap set to a one quarter inch snap you can change that to any value so without even typing in anything i know i can go about half an inch there okay now that is inserted into the object. So if I use the reshape tool, which is right here, I click on that. I can click on any face of the object. And if I were to click on this face here, you can see I can just reshape it out. That'll add volume. I can reshape it inward to subtract the volume. If I reshape it all the way through, it'll subtract that whole part of the object. Now that reshaping process is real-time Boolean operations. Uh, so you always have good, clean, solid geometry as you're reshaping that object. Let's try the offset segment again. What I'm going to do is offset the top segment down. Notice that I can automatically snap to the very center of the object right here. Or maybe back up maybe about a quarter inch. And there's a segment inserted in the face right there. Let's insert a second segment, maybe half an inch down. And then using the reshape tool, once again, I'll take that new face that we have in there 
and just sort of drag that out. Now I can do this graphically by just eyeballing it or notice at any time, look up here in the numeric input palettes. Bonsai 3D is always keeping track of what you're doing. So if at any time you want to type in some kind of number, you don't have to highlight anything. You just type in three and hit the enter key and you're done because it's always watching what you're doing and it keeps track. So it knows if you start typing something, uh, and know that it's related to your current operation. All right. Uh, what do we get? What else do we need to do? How about punch a hole in here? We can do that by using any of the drawing tools. Let's select the circle tool and notice that uh, there is an insert option for the drawing tools also. So if it just so happens that we're drawing on the face of an object, uh, you can see that I can pull up to add volume or I can push it through to subtract volume from the object. So we're actually inserting uh, that shape that we draw right on that object. All right, let's draw another shape up here, push it through, and notice that if I push it through multiple boundaries of that same object, I can actually punch a hole through multiple parts of that same object. All right, uh, what else do we need to do? To save some weight on this bracket, I'm going to punch out some of the material in the middle here. So let's do that using the offset outline tool. And I'm going to create an offset off of anything that's clicked, but I'm going to turn the insert option off. So I don't want to insert it into the object just yet. So let's offset. Um, maybe something like that. And what I'm going to do is move that around a little bit so we can move. And notice that I can move the whole object, or if I hold the command key down on Mac or the control key on Windows, then I can grab just a point, just a segment, or just a face of the object and move that anywhere that we want. So that's how we can actually move just parts of the object. So I can grab any face or segment and point and move it anywhere that I want. There's also all sorts of line editing tools for joining and trimming and maybe add a fillet to an actual line, give it the radius we want, or a fillet radius, click on it, and there we created some kind of shape. Now that's a separate 2D shape. If we want to imprint it into the object, there's the imprint tool, which is right here, imprint. So you click on a 2D shape, and then you click on your object, and that 2D shape is imprinted onto the face, which makes it nice because now I can reshape. Now I'm going to grab that face and just sort of push it through to subtract that part of the object. All right, pretty easy, huh? All right, let's do one more thing with this bracket, and I'm going to use the round tool on that. How does that work? Well, you just set the radius that you want. By default, it's going to select the whole object. It'll try to round every edge. We don't want to round all the edges. We want to round just one edge, so I hold down the Command key so I can grab just a segment and grab just the point or just the face of the object. Let's select this segment right here and round that. And of course, we can change the value if we need over, over there. All right, now this bracket is not very exciting, but at the same time, uh, the uh, reshaping tools are uh, what's the exciting part of this, to be able to be able to take any basic object, such as a box, and very easily sculpt that into any type of shape that you need. All right, let's look at some other tools for creating some basic geometry in Bonsai 3D. Maybe what we'll do is create the tire. And with that, all I did was create a 2D shape. And then with that, uh, what I'm going to do is use the Revolve tool. So with that, I can take uh, this 2D shape that we have right here. And then I click on the line, and that shape revolves around that line. All right. Um, now notice that um, we can always turn those controls back on if we want. So just like any other object, we have a set of controls that we can modify. For example, I can change the Revolve angle. Uh, I can modify that shape all right, and turn those controls on whenever we need. Now for the outside part of the tire, what I'll do is take this shape, use the Revolve tool again on that, take that shape and revolve it around that line to create the rest of that tire. Now um, at this point, this is a good basic introduction uh, to how uh, some of the basic modeling tools are used in Bonsai 3D, some, some of the basic interface features. But what I want to do is move into the actual body of this land sailor. This is where we get into the nice, sleek, organic shapes. So let's go ahead and move on to some of those tools. So what we'll do is we'll bring back our wheel assembly over here. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is create um, the front body around the front wheel assembly. So how am I going to do that? Well, just draw some profile curves which sort of sketch out the shape of that body. All right, and then we go to our NURBS tools. We're going to be using these a lot today. All right, uh, let's see, what do we have? NURBS cross-section tool. What that does is lets us pick a number of profile curves. Here I have four. You can have as many as you want, three, four, five, six. Here I have four, so I pick them in the right order here. Then I need to pick a line that is going to determine the direction of the cross-sections. So I can click on any of these ex existing lines here, maybe this one here. And notice that we'll create the cross sections going through those profiles just like that. All right. Now, if we look in the tool options, we can see that uh, right after we apply that, we can change the number of curves that are created. 
There's also a create surface option. So you can see it'll actually loft a NURB surface through all of those cross sections. Uh, we can leave that um, transparent if we want. Or maybe what I'll do is uh, drag and drop a solid white opaque color on there. So we can actually see that 3D form. And of course, just like any other NURBS object, we have all these controls that I can move and push and pull on those to further reshape that object. So we can sort of quickly uh, create some kind of NURBS object and then move all these controls around to further modify that shape. I can grab like this whole line here and move that up, up or down anywhere that I want, grab a few controls and make changes. So there we go. Okay, so there's our body up front. Sort of go around our front wheel assembly there. And now let's create, how about the back of the body? So I'll zoom out a little bit here. And what I did for that was create a number of 2D uh, cross sections. And if I were to turn our 2.5D sketch back on here, you can see I didn't take a whole lot of time drawing those. I, all I did was use the vector line tool. And so it's a very coarse, jagged shape that is there. All right. And then what I'm going to do is go to the NURBS lofting tool, which is right here. All right, now with that, all I have to do is pick all those shapes. You have to pick them in the right order because it's going to loft a nice smooth NURB surface in the order that you pick those shapes. You can have any number of shapes. And I click, and there we go, a nice smooth organic shape. All right, and of course, just like the other objects, uh, we can right click on it and turn on the show controls. And of course, we have all these controls that we can further modify that shape by pushing and pulling on those controls that are there. Now, we just created some very coarse cross sections. You know, what if we have accurate cross sections? Well, then in the NURBS lofting tool, there is an option here for tight lofting. So it'll tightly, accurately go through your cross sections as you draw them. Now, a good example of when you would need to use that would be to create the actual sail. Now, the sail on this land sailor is not a fabric sail, it's an actual hard sail. It's actually sort of like an airplane wing. And so we've actually accurately drawn these cross sections here. So it's sort of flat on one end and it's curved around the very top portion here. And so each of these are created differently. Uh, and so to make sure that we create that sail exactly as we've drawn these cross sections, we do NURBS loft, tight lofting, and pick them in the right order. And so it doesn't add any additional smoothing or deviation as it's lofting through these cross sections when you're using the tight lofting operation. There we go. And there's our accurately created uh, sail, which is an actual hard sail. It's not a fabric. OK, um, let's move on here. Let's, uh, let's get back onto our body over here. Maybe we need to create some kind of transition here from the front body to the very back over here. And so what we'll do is zoom in a little bit here. And let's turn off a couple of layers here for the sail. And we'll move into this area here. And there's a NURBS blending tool. How does that work? Well, just simply click on two edges. It'll blend a nice transition from one edge to the other. Uh, there's all sorts of continuity settings that we can choose here uh, to make sure it's tangent and to make sure it sort, of, it sort of smoothly blends from one surface into the other. Now, we're going to change it, though. We're going to just do a positional blend, which means it just goes straight from the edge of this surface and go straight into that one. So there's no tangency there. And the reason why I did just a positional is because I'm going to create the actual tangency when I merge the surfaces together. So I do merge using the NURBS merge tool. I just click on two NURBS surfaces, and there we go. They're now merged into one surface. Now, I do have these two dots here. And what I do, one dot represents the edge of one surface. And you can see I can actually drag that and actually control how far uh, one surface uh, blends into the other one. So if I drag that out this way and I grab the other circle and pull it further into the other surface, you can see that you can um, control where one surface ends and the other one starts. And really, it's one continuous surface. So it's just sort of controlling the actual, uh, the actual merging process. All right, let's go over here. Um, let's click on these two NURBS surfaces. All right, and we have our two dots there representing both edges of those surfaces. So if I were to drag that this way a little bit, I can put that a little deeper into that surface and then take this edge and put it deeper into the other surface until I get the type of smooth transition that I want. And now I have one single NURB surface with one set of controls on that object. Pretty neat, huh? All right, what should we do next? Uh, how about trim some of the details into this? Uh, what we're going to do is uh, create a uh, just some normal curves and use those as wires that are going to cut right through that body. All right. Now, it really doesn't matter where you draw those lines. Uh, we can put the lines in front or behind or in the center because they're going to infinitely slice through that object. Now the, now, the actual 
the actual slicing direction is perpendicular to the current plane, so I could have to slice this in either in a front view so it goes straight through that way, or if I'm in a 3D view, just make sure the plane is this way so that it knows which way to, to have those lines cut through the object. All right, let's go to our slice tool, and I'm going to turn healing off because I don't want to keep it a solid object anymore. So now with the healing off, that line will cut right through the object, and it doesn't add any surfaces in there, so it trims it like it's a just a paper surface. Now, if we were to get rid of these lines, we don't need those anymore now that we've cut those through. Let's get rid of the lines. There we go. And let's move the surfaces so you can see uh, that it just sort of sliced that object. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm delete some of these other surfaces that we don't need. I don't need that. That's the opening for the mast for the sail. And we'll delete uh, this opening in the back here using the delete tool. And I'm going to keep this piece right here because I'm going to actually keep that as the glass in inside of as sort of a canopy over the driver's area. All right, now that is a paper-thin surface since we didn't have the heel option on, so cut it just like a surface, and it's a paper-thin surface. There's a thicken tool, which allows us to apply or sort of shell that surface out to make it a uniform thickness if we want. But let's leave it a surface for now. What I'm going to do is zoom into this area and give that a blue transparent color for, to, sort of, to sort of conceptualize the glass that's there. And let's put some molding around here. So what we'll do is sweep a cross section around the edge of that glass. We can use uh, any shape. Let's just use a drawing tool here. Let's make it maybe a dark color. And let's dr draw a circle. Give the radius maybe 0.5 enter. There we go. And then how the sweep tool works is whatever you click on first, that's your source. So I can click on anything that's in the scene, maybe this circle right there. And then the second object I pick will be the path. Whatever I picked is going to follow this path. So I just sort of click right on the edge of that glass, and that shape will then follow it's sort of centered along that path, and that's how we get the molding that looks like that. Pretty easy, huh? All right. Uh, next, what we're going to do is uh, also uh, do another sweep operation because I want to sort of create an object. Let's get rid of the NURBS toolbar here. I want to create an object uh, for the body, which is going from uh, this piece that we have right here. And this is just a solid object that is took an ellipse and extruded that out into a 3D solid object. And I want to have that shape follow along this curve into the main body over here. So go to our sweep tool and we're just going to tell it to take that source shape as positioned. Click on that. There's my source. Click on this and that's my path. And that source just follows along that path. Now, of course, uh, just like any other object, as soon as it's created, we have these controls that we can move so we can change the path, change the shape of the source shape and things like that. Now what if we want a little more flexibility? Let's say I want this wing support to be maybe wider over here and maybe a little more skinny in the middle. Uh, well all we have is a constant cross section that is swept on the path. So what we'll have to do is convert this into a NURBS object. So here's the NURBS convert and all I'm going to do is click on that object and now it's a NURBS object. It still looks the same but now it's NURBS and so if we use the NURBS reconstruct, let's see if I click on that object, uh, it's way too many controls on there. Maybe we want that many if we want to put some fine detail in there, but I just want to make some gradual changes. So let's set five in one direction and five in the other direction. So now we have a grid of five by five points. Okay, and then what I can do is take these points and move those around. So let's take this point. Let's drag that so it's a lot wider in this area. And then I'll zoom into the middle area over here. And I'm just going to sort of move these controls together to make it a lot more narrow in that area, and there we go. It's just that easy. Just If it's a nerves object, just move those controls and sculpt you know, any type of complex shape. All right, now one thing that you might have noticed is as I'm moving all of these controls around, uh, that shape no longer matches this original solid shape over here. And that's not a problem, because what I'm going to do is blend a nice transition uh, from this object into the other one. Now, Unfortunately, the NURBS Blend tool works only on NURBS objects. Well, this is a NURBS object. That's great. This one is not. That's just a plain solid object. So if it only works on NURBS objects, let's convert that into a NURBS. So click on NURBS Convert, click on it, and there. Now every face of that object becomes a NURBS surface. And then what we can do is delete these extra faces that we don't need, like on the end here. And of course, a good rule of thumb, here's a little tip or trick for you here. Whenever you're blending surfaces together, uh, it's always good to have the degree of smoothing the same on both those objects, and you'll get really good results with that blending process. Okay, so I set the degree 3 by 3 which is the same as what we had on this one over here. Now, uh, let's use the blend. I'm going to click on the edge of this 
NURBS surface and click on the edge of that one. And there we go. Uh, that doesn't look right. What's going on? Well, probably the direction of one NURBS surface is the opposite of the other. No big deal. That's why we got this option in here. Flip edge orientation. All you have to do is click on it. And there it automatically adjusts one of them to make sure that those actually line up. And if your seam is ever twisted too, we also have the option to actually that you can adjust that seam and move it anywhere that you want. Just drag those dots and arrows. But everything just happened to line up perfectly here, so I don't have to adjust any, any of that stuff. All right, now one more thing we, we might want to do is we still have our continuity set to positional, meaning it goes straight from the edge of this surface to that one there. So we have sort of a little crease there. Now, if that's what we want, fine. But we want to have a nice smooth tangent transition uh, between those pieces. So what I'm going to do is uh, change that to a tangent. Or you can see we have all sorts of industry standard uh, settings for the type of curvature or continuity of that blended surface as it matches that other surface. So now from the side view, you can see we have a nice smooth blend. Uh, and it's a nice um, tangent blend going from one surface into the other. Now, of course, we could merge those pieces together to make it one surface. But I'm going to keep that a separate piece because maybe that's how we're going to actually going to actually build this as separate pieces. Uh, I, I can always merge that later if I want. All right, enough with that. Um, let's let's move on. What else do we got to do? Uh, we got to take this object. Somehow we got to get that blended and sort of rounded into the side wheel body here. And if we were to look at that in a wireframe view, uh, we can see this object is actually sticking inside of that one. Now we can't use the NURBS blend. And the reason for that is that, that blends the edges of two NURBS services. We don't have any type of edge to actually click on here. It's one object sticking inside the other. So we, we'll use a different type of technique to round these two pieces together. And this works with any type of object. It doesn't have to be nerves. It can be any type of two objects that you create. And here's how the process works. We'll do a split. So we can actually split these two pieces. So I click on it, and it sort of it sort of splits each object, A minus B, B minus A, and the resulting uh, service between those two objects. And I would normally just um, delete these. But I'm going to move these out so you can see what's going on over here. So here's all the resulting surfaces here from those two objects. Put that in shaded work, and there we go. So what I'm going to do is move this object back on the end of this piece over here. I will delete the items I don't need. And now with these two objects here, I can use stitch, which will stitch any two objects together, as long as the seams match. So let's go back to wireframe here for a second. Uh, you can see that the edge of this object matches with the hole that's in the side of that one over there. So that fits perfectly. Just use the stitch tool, stitch the two pieces together to make one single object. And then we'll go back to our round tool that we used earlier. And I'll simply hold the command key so I can click on just one edge of that object. I don't want to try to round all the edges, just the one edge there. Click on it, and there we go, a nice rounded edge. Um, so yeah, let's make that a little wider. So of course, just like any other tool we use, it's in this uh, result buffer mode, so I can actually go in and modify any of those values. All right, that creates a nice transition there for you. Now we'll have to do that same procedure a few more times to get the rest of the body parts uh, sort of rounded into the rest of our body here. So if I were to take this object and move that out, you can see that we actually copied the wheel a body from the front into the back. So we have a housing around the back wheel assembly. Uh, we have some other objects inside the body over here. We have the rest of our wings into the side over here. All we do is we split, we delete the pieces we don't need, stitch the pieces together and round them. And we end up, if I were to fast forward, after doing that multiple times with all those pieces, we end up with one single smooth surface that looks just like this. All right, how's that? All right, um, so then all I have to do is simply drag and drop our materials on that object. And you can see as I drag and drop, um, it automatically texture maps the object for you. Uh, but if you do want to modify that, we use the Edit Texture tool. Click on the object, and you can see we can just as easily modify uh, that um, texture mapping on a 3D object as we do uh, on that 2D shape as we did at the very uh, beginning. All right, uh, let's see. One more thing I want to do here. Let's turn on our driver. We are still trying to find someone to volunteer to actually try this thing out for us once it's built. But we'll just put a virtual guy in there for now, make sure everything fits right, and make sure it's nice and comfy there. Uh, one problem is he doesn't have a seat. Well, let's give him a nice, comfortable seat. So what we'll do is let's turn our body off here. And what I'm going to do is create a series of curves. And I'm going to create a network of curves and just sort of fit a nice smooth NURB surface through that network of curves. And so to sort of help us out here, you can have multiple project windows open uh, within the same project or within multiple projects and copy and paste information back and forth between those. There's also this neat little multi-view mode 
which is pretty cool, which gives us a top, front, side, a three of you, and you can change these around if you want. Also, there's also a sync mode, which lets you line them all up so that the top matches with the front and the side. And then what we're going to do is just create a series of curves. So let's see, let's use a how about spline drawing tool. Now, you know, here's a case where I can actually tell it I want it to be 2D, and I can insert it into anything. Now, in the side view, take that curve and just sort of trace a nice little profile to match our body, just like that. There we go. And I can move those controls around. Um, let's make a copy of that. So let's do a move, put the copy option on. And in the top view, take that curve, bring that down, and make a copy of it. All right, now to turn those controls back on, what I can do is right click on the object see, and turn the show controls on. So let's move that curve to sort of conform to the shape of our body. Move those in. And I think uh, you get a pretty good idea of how you can create complex 3D curves that are twisting in 3D space uh, by being able to move these controls in the top, front, and side views. Okay, so I can move it in this front view, so on and so forth. Now, if I fast forward, uh, I've already created a set of curves for you, so you don't have to sit there for five minutes watching me watch me modify that curve there. And we end up with a series of curves that look like this. All right. Now, these are just a bunch of wires. There's no surface or solid information there. So there's one wire there, one there. So all I do is grab all those wires, and here's a neat little NURBS tool, NURBS by UV Curves. What that does is somehow just sort of magically <laughs> figures out how to just fit a NURBS surface through all those wires. It's sort of like building a wireframe cage and letting the NURBS tool sort of mesh in a surface through those wires for you. All right, so now we're in a nice comfy seat. And let's go back to a single view window. All right, and then let's turn on the final layers here. So we turn on the rest of the land sailor here. All right, now if we go into wireframe mode, uh, you can see we actually have made a little more progress on this. We actually built some of the cage and a few other parts. And really, everything we've done up to this point is using the same tools that I've showed within this past uh, 30 minutes or so. So there's no other tools that were used uh, to create the rest of this than what I've actually shown here. So you're not missing anything if I don't show you how to build a cage and things like that. All right, with that, um, what I like to do is just uh, show that there are many uh, uh, many other ways to visualize your project once it's done. We can put texture mapping on there, things like that. Uh, there's, a, there's a clipping plane tool which lets you um, interactively create cross sections through your model. Uh, you can put dimensions on there. Here's, here's some dimensions that we can actually put on there. they are 3D dimensions. You can put those wherever you want on that model. Uh, and if you, uh, if you add the renders on plugin, you can do realistic ray trace rendering. For example, here we have a rendering where we actually superimposed it with a background image. And you can see we've actually cast shadows onto that background photograph here through an actual ray tracing procedure, which is, which is pretty cool. All right. Now, um, as we mentioned at the very beginning of this webinar, there's a variety of ways of visualizing your project using transparent materials and section views and dimensions and things like that. Uh, you can also do a hidden line rendering of your model and export the lines as vector lines to any other program. So you can export your project as 2D, 3D, or as image data using any of the formats that you see here. You can also import 2D or 3D data from other programs. If you import a 2D CAD file, you can extrude the lines or trace over them to create your own 3D model. And you can also import 2D or 3D files from the web. Most, most manufacturers have their products available on their website. Uh, there's also many other websites that contain thousands of general miscellaneous 3D objects. Uh, just make sure that you choose a format that is supported by Bonsai 3D. Now with that, I would like to thank you for your time. This is just a few of the many features that are in Bonsai 3D. Be sure to check our website for some of the future presentations that are coming up. Uh, you can log out whenever you want. This is now over. Uh, but I will stick around for 10-15 minutes. I'll answer any questions that, that you have. Be sure to type those into your box and I'll see those here. And with that, thank you and have a nice day.